So now we have a yes, no, why, thanks to uh, the idea from Dr. Feldman. The quote is, this new evaluation system is the best thing since sliced bread. So you and a partner are gonna look at each other in the eye and say, yes, I agree with that statement. No, I don't agree with that statement. And why? Begin. Yes, no, why that you think you would like to share with a large group. We'll come around with the microphone. Yes, you agree. No, you don't. And why? When our, can you hear me now? Listen, my concern is, is that the follow-up piece. What happens during the follow-up? And if we, if we don't have high-functioning follow-up sessions, high-level co-inquiry, and, we, and if, we don't, if we just don't do the follow-up, we're gonna be right back to where we started. And I think the administrative team needs to spend a lot of time in the next year developing exemplary follow-up training so that we know when we're doing it well, and we know when we're screwing it up. And we need to get that on a constructive basis. So we need to ask our teachers, how did that work for you? Did I do a good job? Did I burst your bubble? Was it constructive? I, mean, I think that, that question has to be asked all the time. And we need to have exemplars for that information. Otherwise, we'll, we'll stop doing it, and we'll be right back where we started which is nervous and, and, you know, lazy, I guess. I just want to piggyback on what uh, Michael was talking about. I heard a lot we were talking about giving feedback, giving feedback. And feedback oftentimes conjures up, at least for me, a checklist. So that I, let's say I was observing Seth and I came in and I'm giving him feedback. I saw this, 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 and this, and I didn't see this, this, and this. And if the whole point of um, our teacher effectiveness system is to increase our, our effectiveness, then I guess I would submit that feedback in that sense is not going to do it. And what does do it is being involved as equals in this co-inquiry of our practice, of our pedagogy. And I, and I think that we just need to keep continue to do some more work on defining the two and what is the role and purpose of the two. And, um, and it seems to me that the many observations and that debrief, it's more of a co-inquiry than it is feedback. And um, I have to say that I'm learning this more and more and more participating in the math studios because it is the co-inquiry that we do after the data snaps and it's not providing feedback. I think one of the things we're talking about is that the, it's great to know where you're good and where you're bad, but the biggest part in the success of this is the support and that's what's going to make you better as a teacher is the support part. And so I think that builds on the, the kind of idea of co-inquiry. If there isn't a support system for someone or a group to move forward um, and, and get better, then that's what's going to cause this to not do so well and kind of fail. It's that support piece so you know how to get better and you have a group to get better with. Um, another thing I want to mention is that a group of us went to hear Kim Marshall last February. And when he was talking about these many observations, he was saying that the most powerful um, aspect of those follow-up face-to-face, five-minute conversations or ten-minute conversations 
was not, as you mentioned, Vicki, you're right, it's not the checklist, but it's what the teacher hears in that communication, and it's what the teacher does with their self-reflection of your feedback and how we change what happens in our classroom to become more effective and highly effective. So it's after that discussion and the teacher reflection, the power comes in what the teacher does to make those changes in our classrooms. And I think it's important to remember, and many of us here have read Kim Marshall's book, but and he's going to be here in October, so most of us will have the opportunity to hear him. But many observations are one leg of a three-legged stool. So he talks about unit planning, high quality unit planning done collaboratively. He talks about common assessments and the ability to analyze assessments together. And our system includes those things. I think it hasn't, today the focus of the conversation was on the mini observations, but those are, those are two really important legs of that stool of improvement that fits right in with the PLC work that we have been focusing on for two years. So that's a very important part of the work as well. Thank you. Ron's thinking we better wrap this up. Uh, I'm thinking a pop choral quiz before we go. You go. You go, Jim. <laughs> Minimum number of mini observations. Six. Six. Do you need the certified and probationary, or contract, excuse me, contract and probationary, need a goal setting form this school year? Yes. yes. Do they need professional growth plan? The school year. No. How many domains, Jim? What Are domains? Are we looking at this year? Which standards? Everybody? How about me as student services? Am I still one through thirteen? A little bit shorter. Okay. All right. I think they got. It. Again, if you have any burning questions, um, please put those over here because that may dictate what tomorrow looks like. If you have not signed in and you're here today, Debbie Watkins has that in the back corner. Take a break, see you in 15 minutes.